What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, DFS, and uh, everything NFL-related home here at FakePigskin.com. Here to help me recap all that was uh, Week 11, look forward to Week 12, talk some waiver wire. It's DJ Boyer. What's up, DJ? All well here. Good to go over another week. Another week of great action. Yeah. Well, yeah, except for my Titans, who apparently didn't travel to Indianapolis and um got dismantled early and often uh andrew luck's uh been really really good i i do feel like he's finally healthy um obvious obviously addressing that offensive line with quentin nelson has been massive uh he's not taking the hits he used to take um so i it seems like if you're an andrew luck owner you should be doing backflips right now because he is rewarding those uh, who who drafted him? Had to be very very patient, but I think he is rewarding people. And uh, also, just to expound on your point about your Titans, I think they were hanging out in an unnamed uh, hotel lobby with my Eagles, who also <laughs> failed in New Orleans. So yeah, uh, I, 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 weekend. Yeah, we, I think we lost a combined like eighty something to thirteen. Uh, it was <laughs> it was not not pretty. Um, the th- uh, a few things I want to hit on. Obviously, we'll talk some injuries. We'll talk some news. I want to talk about Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, it looks like the Cowboys are kind of, I don't want to say rounding into form because I'm not sure how, how what, what their level is. And obviously, in the NFC East, that seems wide open now. We'll obviously talk about the Alex Smith injury. Um, but Zeke, back-to-back, 120-plus yard games, 150 against your Eagles, 122 against the Falcons. Um, involved in the passing game, 13 catches in the past two weeks, uh, even found a, found a touchdown, uh, in the passing game a week ago. Um, he seems to really be playing really well. And I feel like the offensive line is playing better. Obviously having Dak there playing better, Amari Cooper doing stuff. Um, it seems like this offense is, is, is kind of playing up to what we thought they might be, um, when, when we entered the season. Yeah, not only are they just starting to get on track, I think you'd have to say they're the favorites for the NFC East right now. Yeah. It seems like no one really wants to win this division. And as crazy as it sounds, the the Giants with a couple of uh, wins, they get hotter. They're still mathematically, they're alive. Not only alive, but they've got a decent shot. Uh, But right now, the Cowboys are only one back. And the fact that, you know, Alex Smith and that injury, you're only one game uh, behind the Redskins, who you'll play uh, this week. Uh, on Thanksgiving Day, so if they they beat them, they'll be tied. They'll be one and one against each other. So it's wide open for Ezekiel Elliott. You just got to get the ball into the playmakers' hands, and right now, that's what's happening. There's just enough of the passing game, enough of a threat throwing the ball that they're not going to stack the box against Ezekiel Elliott. So uh, it's working. The defense has been pretty good for for Dallas overall this year. They've been yeah. they've been getting some pressure on the quarterback. The linebacker plays good, so. Why not? Somebody's got to win the NFC East right now, and I think that's a team with the best shot at this moment. Yeah, Leighton Vander Esch has been incredible. I picked him up in an IDP league a couple weeks ago, and um, we, you know, we only start like three players, but uh, he's been incredible. He's been racking up the points, so many tackles, getting involved, you know, making interceptions. He's looked really good. Uh, let's talk about the those Washington Redskins because Alex Smith broken leg um it's almost i think it was 33 years to the day of the joe theisman injury theisman was in the house he said this is the worst injury since you know since my injury basically um it was gruesome they were kind of i was watching red zone it was flipping around and and they cut right to this game right after that happened They're like oh here's alex smith he just got tackled he seems to be hurt and they showed him kind of like roll over and his leg was like flopping back and forth it was it was not for the faint of heart um Definitely feel awful for him uh, in terms of his, you know, career and his path. You know, this might be something that kind of he's just done after this. Like he's 34, approaching 35. Uh, you know, it's a long, long rehab to, to you know, broke his tibia and his fibula. Um, you know, this might be like a, a two-year recovery till he's up into the point where 
where he can actually you know be able to play quarterback and at that point who knows maybe he tries to hang on a couple more years as a backup but he's played a long time I, I would not be shocked to see him leave obviously you know we were talking about this team a couple weeks ago uh, injuries to the offensive line uh, an aging Adrian Peterson in- injuries to the defensive side of the ball uh, it, it does definitely seem like things are going in the wrong direction um, I, I guess you know, you mentioned the Giants. You mentioned, you know, we feel pretty good about Dallas. How do you feel about your Eagles? Obviously, uh, the game against New Orleans was not a, a pretty sight, but you still have Carson Wentz. You still have uh, a really good offense. The defense isn't great, and it, it seems, seems to be kind of battle, battling injuries in the secondary. Do you feel like there's still an outside shot for you guys to get healthy and uh, figure a few things out and, and make a playoff run, or, or do you – have serious concerns about kind of where this the season's heading i don't know about serious concerns uh for philadelphia i've I've thought all along it's more of a dress rehearsal um but at the same time legitimately i feel the giants are still alive any team can take this division the only thing you can take solace is is aside from this uh demolishment they had they've really been in just about every game this year they've lost a couple of the the close one they lost to tennessee where Tennessee actually converted uh, fourth, uh, three fourth downs mm-hmm. uh, at a couple of uh, nail biters. So it's not like they're getting blown out on a routine basis. The secondary is very concerning. They are, uh, they're down four of the top six people they started the year with. So it's, they're very, very thin there. And the offensive line has, they've just not performed this year. There's been a few injuries here and there, but at the same time, you can't put it all on injuries there. Um but they but they can get hot uh, or, or just win a couple of games. They do have a game uh, with Dallas yet, and they have two games with the Redskins. Yeah. So they definitely – they can do it, but they have to take care of things in-house. And uh, they have a game with the Giants this weekend who's won two in a row, and the next game I'll be at, I will be there. Uh, so we'll see if uh, uh, that helps uh, get them <laughs> but, if the, but if the Giants actually win, you got to think they're, this is a team that a lot of people still thought was going to win – the Giants win this game, and they're in the basement with the Giants. So, yeah. uh, say it all along: the the difference between fourth and f- first and fourth is is paper thin yeah. in a lot of these divisions. Yeah, game against the Giants, two against Washington, one against Dallas. That I mean, if you win those games, you'll have a great shot at winning. And then obviously at at the Rams isn't ideal, um, but home versus the Texans, I feel like that's a winnable game. I feel like Washington, even with Colton McCoy, had a chance to win that game on Sunday. So. Um, I, I, you know, it, it, it's all in front of them. If they, if they put it together, they figure some stuff out. But, uh, as you mentioned, losing as many pieces as they have in the secondary is not, uh, a great thing. Uh, let's talk about carry on Johnson, who the lions actually won, uh, their game on against Carolina, uh, but they lost carry on Johnson to a knee injury. Um, they were actually worried it might be an ACL injury. It turns out it's just a sprain, um, but he's already been ruled out for Thursday uh, on Thanksgiving. You know, it'll see. We'll see how long he's actually out. Maybe a couple weeks. Obviously, the Lions' season. You know, they're not going to make the playoffs. They're not heading towards. You know, uh, uh, so there's no reason to rush him back, get him back in the lineup. So, uh, as fantasy owners, Theo Riddick. Um, obviously been a lot more involved uh, in the past couple weeks, getting involved in the passing game, which is great to see. LeGarrette Blunt's still their first and second down pounder, a uh, guy who should get carries in the goal line. Is it as simple as if you're in a standard league, you add Blunt? If you're in a PPR, you add Riddick? Or are you interested in both? What Where are you at with this backfield? I'm really interested in both right now. Really more Riddick just because uh, – even though he's not, uh, you know, one of the best runners we see, if you're just going to go on just sheer talent as far as catching the ball of the backfield, he's one of the best five backs in football. This is a guy that that is just very, very talented out of the backfield. He, he's a guy that can really uh, get a, a breakout game where he's going to get uh, seven, eight catches uh, at, at a moment's notice. It can definitely happen, especially when you're, you're talking about a, a Lions team that, a lot of games they've really fallen behind quick this year and they've been throwing, throwing, throwing in the second half. And because of that, I think that Riddick it probably adds more value even than a Garrett Blunt because in a, in a game where they're playing from behind or throwing the football a lot, it really takes uh Garrett Blunt out of the offense. Again, he's going to get those goal line carries, but uh, I think that we're going to see Riddick probably get the majority of the time just because if you play the numbers, 
The, uh, the Lions actually even, uh, I believe they are number three in the NFL as far as playing from behind, as far as a percentage uh, where they're trailing. I think it's 72% of games or their snaps that they play this year, they're behind, yeah. which is third in the NFL. So that lends itself to throwing the ball a lot, and I think that's why Riddick is probably a better pickup. Yeah, I think I'm with you, especially if it's half or full PPR. Um, even in the game against Carolina where they were up most of that game, he still caught the ball five times. Um, you know, he has he's averaging basically six target six catches a game for the past three weeks. Obviously won't get you a ton of yards. Uh but he, you know, this is a guy that we've also seen kind of have unique plays in and around the red zone with Golden Tate out of the picture. Can get uh, some some shorter passes. He can even get a few handoffs um, if if he's in. They're moving a little up tempo. Um, you know, it makes me feel better about. I added Matthew Stafford in some leagues. He's an interesting guy now. Now that Carry On's out there, maybe they throw a little more. You know, a few more checkdowns to Theo Riddick and um, Stafford becomes a lot more interesting. Um, over the next couple weeks so keep an eye on him if you are a carry-on owner but like I said he's definitely out this week probably out for I would expect a couple weeks maybe he comes back for the last two or three games of the season um, just to kind of get him a little more confidence heading into year two Um, let's talk about Tampa Bay where the quarterback rotation has happened yet again Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick fell apart Turned into Ryan Fitz tragic. Jameis Winston back in the game. Um, they've already named him back. Th- they named him the starter. Um, and he's got a really good matchup this week at home versus the 49ers, a team you can definitely throw on. Uh, you know, he came in, looked really good. Uh, you know, almost 200 yards, two touchdowns. He's obviously going to throw picks, but when you have Mike Evans and OJ Howard, who's a little banged up, might, you know, keep an eye on him. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, you know, a, a team that definitely throws. Um, you know, if you need a quarterback, I think uh, I think it's definitely a great way to look, especially uh, if you're just looking for a one-week fill-in. Oh, yeah, you could do a lot wor- uh, worse matchup-wise. I think this is great not only there, but maybe even Peyton Barber for another uh, yeah. another good outing, toting the ball. He had a pretty good uh, outing this week. And, again, uh, San Francisco, they seem to be one of these teams lately that just kind of plays to the level of their competition, mm-hmm. keeping games close. They're not great against the run. They're not horrible. Same way with the pass. I think there's a little, a little inexperience back there uh, with with Richard Sherman, uh, and then some of his kind of, uh, I'd say, less experienced teammates that are back yeah. there with him in the, in the secondary. So I think uh, it's good from a from a standpoint. It's just about anybody on the Tampa Bay offense. I think can really uh, contribute this week with with the matchup that we have. Yeah, yeah, and if you, you know, O.J. Howard owner and adding Cameron Brate might not be the worst idea in the world. Obviously, Winston likes to throw to him, and if you know O.J. Howard's out, it might be a a good way to look. Um, Speaking of tight ends that you might have to replace, Jimmy Graham, he has a broken thumb from the game on Thursday. Um, It sounds like they're trying, you know, it sounds like he's going to try and play, but, you know, if he plays with a big old cast on his hand, is that someone you want to start and use in fantasy? Like, I know the tight end position it kind of in general hasn't been great, but, uh, you know, Jimmy Graham hasn't really blown anyone out of the water. And if he's playing with a cast and he's kind of banged up, uh, I, I mean, I'm I'm becoming more and more or, le- I guess, less and less interested in, in having him in my lineup, even if he's healthy. Absolutely. I think it's it's been a down year from the tight end uh, position. But, again, Jimmy Graham really hasn't had that uh, great year that I think a lot of people were looking for hearkening to years past uh, where he really put up some big numbers. Uh, He's someone I kind of stay away from Uh, really the tight end uh, position overall this year. is just more about Mm -hmm. matchups. So when you look across, uh, I'm even going to pick all my Eagles that there's been some uh, tight ends or some of those players uh, kind of playing that H back role that have really put up some big numbers as far as, uh, uh, with that soft secondary and the linebackers there. So even a player like Evan Ingram, who's got some, you know, he, he's put up some big games, uh, the Giants. I think they're a team that can really do some damage uh, against Philadelphia with uh, the tight end position. Uh, even think uh, Baltimore, uh, even even if Lamar Jackson's going to be back there, it, it seems like they want to work him with some shorter passes and a, a, get a, a little more of the, the tight ends involved, not, not looking toward – the receivers so much so maybe even a situational game there against oakland uh, who's given up by uh, about the third or fourth most points against tight ends in standard leagues this season 
Yeah, I'm looking at uh, points against right now. The Panthers, obviously, you can throw on them. Detroit, Michael Roberts isn't sexy, but available in a lot of leagues. Um, as you mentioned, the Bengals aren't very good. So those Baltimore Ravens tight ends look very, very nice. Uh, Pittsburgh struggles as well. Uh, Jeff Hyderman is a, wa- a guy who's going to be available in a lot of leagues um, that has been getting some targets, getting some consistent work. Denver looks like they're decent enough on offense where Hyderman could get five, six, seven targets, and you feel pretty good about him. Uh, Kansas City, um, they're on the bye, so you ignore them. Uh, but yeah, you know, there's there's a few teams that you guys could, that you guys can look at. If you need tight ends or, or, you know, like I mentioned, Cameron Breed, if O.J. Howard's out, um, I think is a great option as well. Uh, let's dive in. Let's talk some more waiver wire options. I think there's a, a bunch to get into. But um, I want to start with your Eagles and talk about Josh Adams, who, despite, you know, the game kind of getting sideways, was still really productive. He only carried the ball seven times, 53 yards and a touchdown, though rewarding his fantasy owners. Um, you know, s- still available in 70% of leagues. I think, you know, as much as this has been kind of a, a real timeshare this season, I feel like I feel like going the rest of the way, especially if things aren't going quite like they expected, uh, I think Adams is going to get most of the volume from the running back position um, just to see what they have in him, to see if he can be uh, somebody who gets 15-ish carries a game. Um, you know, obviously Clement and Smallwood will still get their, their work, um, but I think if you're looking for a running back who could shoulder – you know, 60% of the load or whatever for, for a good offense. I think Josh Adams is a great name to look at. Yeah. And I think a part of this is, is really seeing too, how much can he contribute catching out of the backfield? They seem to be making more of an effort to really even target him, getting a couple more passes that are, that are coming his way. That was really the weakness, even though he's such a big target too, at six, two, but just never, it's not something he's really, can't do it's just something he was never really asked to do at notre dame yeah just seems to be an aspect of his game that's ever been slow to develop per se so i still don't think he's the best person overall in that backfield but again it it does look like he's getting the majority of the work it seems like there's a lot of talk that Corey clements a little more banged up than what people realize and he's really trying to play through a couple of nagging injuries so i think that seems to be limiting his production right now so uh Right now, going forward, I probably would have had a lot more work again if they weren't playing from about 25 to 30 points behind for just about the whole game. Yeah. Uh, that 28-yard burst, that was, that was a good touch, uh, good reward, and the first NFL touchdown for him. So I, I think, again, it's a little bit of a dress rehearsal for next year. Yeah, and Peterson was definitely talking him up before the game, He's kept going about him after the game. So that's always good when your coach is bringing you up, talking about, you know, obviously there wasn't a lot of positives for Philadelphia, but I think that was definitely one. Um, speaking of running backs that I'm not sure, uh, you, you, obviously I'm, I'm adding him this week, but I'm not, I'm not sure of, of this whole situation, but Gus Edwards, uh, looked really, really good on Sunday. Um, carried the ball 17 times for 115 yards and a touchdown. Um, obviously Alex Collins, uh, was a guy that I was really excited about, kind of hoped, you know, down the stretch would, would be really impressive and having some good matchups, but, um, Collins was healthy. Collins was fine. Uh, as far as I could tell, I watched this game pretty closely and, um, you know, Gus Edwards kept getting the work, kept being really productive with it. Average 6.8 yards per carry. And when you're carrying the ball almost 20 times, that's really, really good. Um, I, I think, you know, it, it's hard to kind of know what this offense is going to look like. There's still talk that Flacco may be back, even though Lamar Jackson, you know, w- in terms of a, as a passer, it didn't look great, but he was running the ball over 100 yards, uh, which definitely helps open things up for running backs. But I, I guess, it, you know, what, it, what did you have pre-draft thoughts on Gus Edwards and kind of, um, you know, what are your expectations for how this backfield shakes out the rest of the way? This one came out of nowhere for me as well. Uh, and it just seemed to be one of those situations where stay with a hot hand. Uh, he really seemed to uh, kind of be responding and, even though it was kind of a rough day throwing the football, and we all know that Lamar uh, Lamar Jackson's not going to survive in this league, especially with his frame carrying the ball 27 times. Yeah. It's just not realistic. But it just seemed to be a, a pickup. And again, being at this game, it just seemed to be a boost everywhere. Even the wide receivers that weren't getting work or catching a lot of passes, they made some difficult catches. They were uh, The blocking was there. It seemed to pump up the defense a little bit. It seemed to bring a little bit of energy. Um, not that 
I'd say the team is against Joe Flacco. He's he's pretty well liked and respected guy, but I think there's a lot of people on that team that realize that the transition is happening. The next step has to happen. And you could just kind of sense that this team really wanted to play uh, for, uh, for Lamar Jackson. And I think uh, you know, Gus Edwards just, you know, you stay with the hot hand. I think he's yeah. going to see a little more work again this week, but this was a little bit puzzling. It's, it's not something that was on, on my radar. Uh, a guy that I felt was probably going to stick somewhere as an undrafted free agent. It's kind of what happened. And, uh, I don't know. He's kind of the Cinderella story. He's the Rudy for this week. No one saw it coming, but uh, they'll stay with a hot hand. Why not? It's really funny to see, you know, uh, there's a lot of teams that really invest draft capital. And obviously when you're, we talk about guys like Saquon Barkley, it makes sense, but even as high as he goes, but you know, we're talking about Gus Edwards. We're talking about Philip Lindsay. We're talking about Josh Adams, all these undrafted running backs that are making contributions, making impacts, um, you know, looking really good. It's, it, you know, these players have talent and, you know, it, they may not be taken on in, in the actual NFL draft, but if they're good enough, they'll find their ways in the training camp. They'll find their ways on the practice squads um, and eventually they'll get work. And um, when you get your opportunity, you got to seize it. But yeah, I think, uh, I think Edwards is definitely an interesting name. Um, if you're adding somebody for the rest of the season, do you trust Josh Adams more or Gus Edwards? Right now, I would just trust Josh Adams a little bit more, yeah. even though, again, I'm still not 1,000% sold there, but it's really just been one week. Uh, it could be Edwards. If you if you really want to take a flyer, based on that one week, audition was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think that Adams is a guy who's going to get a lot of touchdowns, and they're they, again, still not getting a lot of catches, but you know they're trying to work him in a little more, uh, especially if you're going to have it being a little more wide open with Lamar Jackson carrying the ball. Seems to suit that uh, Gus Edwards style. So, uh, again, it's a flyer. Maybe this is a one-week thing, but if you've really got the room or it's toward the end of the year and you got to really make a ballsy pick, why not? I mean, the, the production was there this week. Yeah. Uh, maybe he strikes with it again. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think I, I trust Adam's volume more. more. Um, but Gus Edwards is definitely worth picking up, definitely worth keeping uh, on your bench. And maybe he's a guy that down the stretch ends up you know, because this Ravens schedule against def defenses um, is amazing for running backs. So if he ends up being the guy and is getting 15 to 20 carries, he's going to reward fantasy owners who added him. So I, I like that call. Obviously, the Lions guys are interesting as well um, if you're looking for running backs. Let's talk wideouts. Uh, I do want to give a big shout out to my dude, DJ Moore who uh, was incredible on Sunday. And if uh, I end up winning my week and making in the playoffs, which hopefully Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey get me there, um, DJ Moore will be a huge part of it. Seven catches, 157 yards, a touchdown, looked really good. Um, you know, I, I've been kind of waiting for this big breakout to happen. Obviously, the five for 90 versus Baltimore was nice. Um but, yeah, DJ Moore is an incredibly talented receiver that I think is going to be a thing in the NFL um, and, and really reward Carolina for that first-round draft capital. Um, but looked really good and, and definitely um, was impressive. Um, you know, and another rookie that we definitely need to hit on, uh, unfortunately against your Eagles, Traquan Smith, 10 catches, 157, another touchdown. Um, these rookie receivers are really coming on, DJ. They've had to, and in the case of Traquan Smith, of course, the much talked about decision to sign Des Bryant, which unfortunately yep. ended within rather quickly, didn't work out. We've been kind of waiting for that second uh, real prospect along the outside to emerge. Thought that uh, Traquan Smith would be the guy, uh, UCS Central Florida a product. Uh, pretty big, uh, pretty big target as well. Got huge hands if you really look at him, mm -hmm. even though he's not a. Uh, tall, tall receiver. He's really got some mitts on him. So he's a guy that uh, is not going to blow you away with his speed or route running, just hard worker and just enormous hands. And it really paid off against a very depleted secondary. But I think uh, just even the percentage of catches, even though he didn't have a lot of catches, uh, he was finding the end zone. Uh, I, I think right now it's about four or five touchdowns on the year, even though he's got, you know, only about 30, 30 catches on the season. Yeah. So it, it's a good ratio. And again, you, when you've got a guy like Drew Brees, who is, I think neck and neck with Todd Gurley right now is the NFL MVP, slinging it and completing a ridiculous about 77% of his passes. 
uh, you, you've got the most accurate guy in the NFL right now throwing you the football, uh, opportunity is going to be there. They can't go to Michael Thomas all the time. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, they've always found unique ways to get him the ball, whether it's a downfield or shot. They've shown the ability when they get in close to throw him the ball. So he can be a high-volume guy. He could be a two-targets guy with an 80-yard touchdown. He, you know, He's finding different ways to be really productive. Uh, Christian Kirk, three for 77 and a touchdown. Nice big explosive play. And Anthony Miller found the end zone again, third time in four weeks. Uh, I really, I'm really enjoying this rookie class. If you had to add one of these four receivers – for the stretch run, who who's most interesting to you? To me, it's still Anthony Miller. I, I've said all along, I thought he was going to have the huge second half. I've liked the fact that DJ Moore is really starting to emerge because really Devin Funches is, is never really going to be a number one target. So I think they've been waiting in Carolina for him to emerge as well. Funches is a guy who can play as a number two, three, be productive, but just not really be that number one guy. Uh, I think he's more of a compliment receiver than a go-to. Yeah. But uh, Christian Kirk, I think he's really building the rapport. This season, I don't think it's there. But of all the people we're talking about with him and Rosen, I think in, a, in another year or two, that could really be the combo that surprises people. I, I see them kind of developing together. They've had a mm. – seems like a very, very good rapport since, since the very beginning of training camp. That's a, a good uh, – a really good-looking combination for the future. I, I, I just think it's a little bit early, and there's just a – that offensive line is just just way too porous in Arizona, but as yeah. as they start to tighten things up, I think down the road that's probably going to be the best pickup there would be Christian Kirk, just not this year. Yeah, I love him for the for the long term, and I'm 100 percent with you. I think Rosen's going to be good, and uh, I think those two guys together is going to be really impressive. Uh, yeah, I'm I, I think in, if you're looking for consistency, Anthony Miller is probably the best bet. Um, you know, he's got four touchdowns in six weeks. He's got five on the season. He's um, obviously, you know, a handful of catches every game. Uh, not a ton of yards, uh, but those will come. Um, and, and, you know, I think he's got more sustainability in this offense where if you go to New Orleans, talk Traquan Smith, you got Kamara and Michael Thomas getting all so much work. And uh, DJ Moore, I think, could, could be number two behind him um, and obviously has that massive upside uh, on a week-to-week -week basis, but he could also kind of catch one or two balls and, and not really be effective. And then, obviously, I love Christian Kirk, but, yeah, you're not going to be able to play the Raiders every week or the Niners or, or whatever, but I think he's going to be another guy down the stretch. Um, I'm really excited about the rookie class and, and where this receiving core is going. Um, we talked Jameis. We talked Lamar. I think they're both interesting. Um, I think Baker's still in that conversation where if you need a, a streamer, and obviously I'll have those up soon, uh, you know, those are other names to target. Uh, so DJ, as we, you know, obviously I'm, I'm going to be glued to the TV for Rams chiefs. Uh, we're going to be excited about, you know, week 12, um, three games on Thanksgiving, a whole bunch more on Sunday and Monday. Um, any specific thing you're looking forward to, uh, either for next week or for the stretch run? Um, yeah, I think really for the stretch run, it's really, We've mentioned a lot uh, just in this segment today about injuries, and I think mm -hmm. this is really the time where teams that have really had that those rosters that are a little bit uh, more full or they've, they're have they not just dependent upon their starters, you really start to see them separate a little bit or they really start to reward themselves from a fantasy standpoint as well as just from uh, wins and losses and making a playoff push. We're really starting to see a lot of key injuries and teams – and their depth charts are really being tested. So I'm anxious to see how some of these teams that are thin in these areas are going to start to respond in the stretch. If I'm looking at uh, actual uh, matchups, you know the Monday night or next week, your Titans against uh, the Texans to me is yeah. very intriguing because the Texans got off on that winning streak after going 0-2. But again, you don't get the sense that they're infallible. They can still be caught. Tennessee is as, is as, talent as, any, as talented as any team in that division. Andrew Luck and the resurgence that he's had there, uh, the Texans really, this is not, I think if you talk to someone maybe three, four weeks ago, they'd think, oh, the Texans got that winning streak. They can just kind of put it on cruise control. That's really not the case anymore. Even though oh. Tennessee has just been so inconsistent, they look great and then they lay an egg. You know, they get hot. Again, they're as good as anyone in the division. And with Andrew Luck playing the way he is right now, Houston cannot afford a slip up. So I really think that's going to be a key division, divisional game within the AFC South. 
Uh, and, and Pittsburgh, that, just an impressive yeah. comeback. They've won six in a row. Got to get it going against Denver. Denver at four and six at mile high. You get a feeling if the Pittsburgh Steelers come in there, beat them and, and a four and seven, it's really kind of a last stand for the, for the, the Broncos. They're talented enough to make a playoff push, but if they're four and seven after that week uh, or after that loss, I think that that's, uh, th- this could be a trap game for the Steelers winning six in a row. There's going to be a let up at some point. Yep. This could be a big game for the Broncos and I'm looking for them to bounce back and not quite throw in the towel on their season yet. Yeah, I know the Broncos and it was really good to see them play so well against the chargers obviously you know they could they could still be a dark horse team in in as a, in terms of a playoff spot uh yeah but i'm with you titans texans is going to be critical if texans win all of a sudden they're eight and three and looking really good for that to win the division um and then colts are scraping for a playoff for a wild card berth but if the titans win all of a sudden you got you know the colts we should should beat the dolphins two teams at six and five one team at seven and four that's all really competitive the other game that i'm interested in is that is the sunday nighter the packers vikings if the Packers win that game, all of a sudden there's a there's a real shot at one of those two teams being the wild card. But you know, if the Vikings want to be that team and, and kind of re, and kind of build on what they did last year, they have to win that game and they have to you know uh, play better down the stretch so they can make sure they get one of those wild card spots. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested in this slate. Uh, I'm looking forward to eating a bunch of really good turkey uh, and stuffing and all that good stuff and watching some football on Thursday. Uh, and then DJ will be back next week to recap it all once again. Uh, but for DJ Boyer, I'm Kyle Robert, and we'll talk to you guys next time.